Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Today I'm gonna to mix a 90s style rock track through the console. It's gonna be kind of a hybrid mix. I've got a few things going on in the box and then some analog outboard gear as well. The song is called The Air. It's one of my songs from the Completest 2015 album, Songs for Cats. So it's not actually a 90s track, but it's a 90s style track. You'll see it's got like some cool Smashing Pumpkins guitar and guitar textures and big fat drums. It's going to be awesome. Come hang out with me while we mix it. Cool. Thanks for joining me at the mixing console. So most of the processing here is going to be the console and analog outboard gear with the exception of the soft tube tape plug-in. I have that on the kick drum. I have Slate Virtual Tape Machine on the overheads. I've got a touch of the Re-EQ from Reaper that's the built-in plug-in in Reaper. I just did that because I needed to make some precise adjustments and I find that's a great EQ plug-in for that. And that's on the guitar solo. Otherwise, all of our processing for this mix is the console, console EQs, and analog outboard gear. Starting down here, we've got kick drum, snare drum, we've got stereo toms, stereo overheads, and I did have a hi-hat mic. I believe that's blended in with these and sent from the DAW out to these two channels on the console. Then we have a room mic right here. Bass guitar. Then we have the main guitar. This is a clean electric guitar. This is what starts the song. We've got a very heavy stereo pair of guitar tracks right here. We've got a guitar melody line and the guitar solo. A couple of acoustic guitars, which are actually two separate guitars played by Heath Rogers and myself. Those are panned really wide and stereo at the end of the song. In this kind of 90s style track, you've got heavy to quiet in a couple of places, so that's pretty cool. Then we have the guitar solo here on this track and a background or harmony vocal and the lead vocal. I had a problem with my Yuri LA-10 today. I'm not sure if it's a connection or a problem with the actual compressor, but I had some hum with that. So for bass guitar today, I decided to use one of my ART TCS twin compressor systems because I have two of those. So I'm using a twin compressor system channel on the kick drum for compression. On the snare drum, I have the Symmetrix 501 bass guitar is another channel of the ART TCS twin compressor system. Since I have two of the ART TCS twin compressor systems, I'm using the other one on the lead and the harmony vocal tracks. I have an additional trick with some other analog gear I'm using on the snare drum and on the lead vocal track. I'm using a color module. In the case of the snare drum, I'm using the HRK discrete line driver color module on the snare track. That's before it hits the Symmetrix 501 compressor. So it's hitting that transformer in that discrete line driver card from HRK audio. It's a color module. So um, I'm using an HRK C2584 stereo color processor to run line level signals through those color modules. So this snare drum is hitting that color module first and then the Symmetrix 501 compressor. I'm using the other channel of the HRK C2584 on the lead vocal, but on the lead vocal track, I'm using a louder than left off Royal Blue color module instead of the HRK discrete line driver like I am using on the snare drum. I'm also using a touch of the Yamaha Rev 500 reverb. I have just a basic plate setting, 1.2 seconds of reverb time. I have screenshots of all this stuff that I'm showing while I talk that I edit into the video, so you'll see all of that somewhere on the screen at this point. The reverb return for that Rev 500 is this blue fader down here, and what I'm sending to it is basically the guitar solos, the guitar fill, I do have a little bit of the drum room mic being sent to that reverb as well just to make the drums a little bit bigger. A touch of that reverb on the lead vocal. I don't have any reverb on the drum close mics, just a touch of it added to the room mic. I find that that's a good way to do a subtle reverb enhancement on a drum kit is use a distant mic to add that reverb to. I've also got that reverb being added to the fill guitar track or kind of a melody guitar track that plays through the song. It's kind of a cleanish tone and on the guitar solo. Shine. 
That's what it sounds like so far. Some of these other faders were up for no reason because I'm putting these things together and listening and trying to get ready to make a video. And yeah, sometimes I don't remember what I've sent where. So we have the kick drum on this side of the bottom ART TCS twin compressor system and the snare running through the Symmetrix 501 compressor. Of course, this also has the HRK discrete line driver color module in front of it on the snare drum. The settings on the ART TCS twin compressor for the kick drum, we have the V3 voicing knob set to percussion on the VCA side, so that's just purely VCA compression. The attack is straight up and down, releases two clicks left of straight up and down. Same with the threshold and the ratio is three to one. I do have the tube circuit on as well. It kind of enhances the attack of the kick drum a little bit. The snare drum, was going through the Symmetrix 501. You can see the settings here. Got a little bit faster release. That's kind of a slow attack because I didn't want to kill the attack of the snare. Moving on to the bass guitar, we have the bass guitar running through the left side of the bottom ART TCS twin compressor. Threshold is slightly to the left of center, three to one ratio, and we have that set to VCA bass on the V3 voicing control there. So here are the lead vocal and the background harmony vocal through the ART twin compressor system. Both of those are set to the V3 vocal preset, which is the optical compressor and then the VCA compressor after it. Both of them are being fed to the Yamaha Rev 500 reverb on that basic plate setting, the 11.5 
milliseconds of pre-delay and 1.2 seconds of reverb time. Repeating on and on, big mistake, I won't follow down again, and I'm breathing. So the color module in this sense is giving the lead vocal a little bit of thickness and a little bit of edge to the voice that it doesn't have without it. Then we're smoothing it out with the ART twin compressor system, hitting the optical compressor before the VCA compressor to catch those final peaks in that lead vocal track. Here are the drum tracks soloed. Sounds pretty good so far. I'm going to play the whole mix and show the screenshots of the rack. As usual, like in all of my recent videos over the last at least year or so, I timestamp all of these. So if you're looking for a particular thing in the video, there's always timestamps these days. And I always have links in the description that relate to the video. So always check the video description because there may be some additional information or links to other videos about things that were featured as part of this video. So we've got some EQ on the board. I'll show you kind of what's going on. I've got an overhead camera shot for that here. Boosting a little bit of high mids for some attack on the kick drum and a little bit of low mids. But I'm boosting the low mids in a different place on the kick drum than what the fundamentals of the bass guitar. So that way the bass guitar and the kick drum can sit in the mix together and I don't have to side chain a compressor or anything like that. The snare drum I'm adding a little bit of attack around 7k with the EQ and other than that we just have that HRK discrete line driver color module and the Symmetrix 501 compressor on that snare drum. The toms I'm EQing a little bit. I have a little bit more low mids boosted on the left side of that tom pair than on the right because that floor tom has a huge amount of lows and low mids so we didn't need as much boost on the right as we do on the left. Overheads, I'm pulling out around 800, just kind of a funky frequency there, and boosting a little bit of 7K, 8K, and a little bit of 12K. With the room mic in this mix, it's not a really huge room sound, so that's why I added a little bit of reverb to that room mic. I also boosted some low mids, and for that I just fished around and found, kind of found the sweet spot on the EQ for that room mic with the low mids, and then I boosted some high mids on that, to accentuate the attack of the snare drum, especially during the parts where it's a stick click, because when this was recorded, the stick clicks and the full snare were recorded on the same track at the same time, not with separate mics or anything fancy like that. On the bass guitar, I boosted a little bit around 700, between 700 and 1K for a little extra attack. I've also boosted some 60 Hertz on the main clean guitar, I'm not really doing anything, although everything from here up is pretty much high passed. Got some really heavy, like face melting heavy guitars here, and I've pulled a little bit of mids out of those and a little bit of high mids as well, just to keep it out of the way of the guitar solo that's playing at the same time. 
those two acoustic guitars. That was actually Heath and I playing acoustic guitars facing each other with both of them mic'd. We played that simultaneously. This was the last track that we actually recorded for the songs for Cat's album was this acoustic guitar. So these are each of us playing an acoustic guitar facing each other mic'd up and here in the mix we have no EQ on those acoustic guitars. I do have high pass on the channels on on these acoustics. There's no EQ on either one of those, no compression, nothing like that. They're just panned hard left and right in stereo. There is not a whole lot going on with the vocal tracks. I've boosted a little bit around 5K on the lead vocal. And of course the lead vocal is being slammed into the louder than liftoff royal blue color module and then through the ART TCS twin compressor system on the vocal, what is it, the OPL? What is that thingy? Oh yeah. So let's check out the full mix now. I'll put the rack screenshots on so you can check out the action of all the compressors and everything going on in the mix. And you can check out this awesome song. Shattered spaces And we want Competing on and on Big mistake That's a super cool song. I definitely enjoyed this mix of it. I always enjoy using the console and the outboard gear. I find that I get really good sounds this way and it seems like it comes together a lot faster. I don't know. I mainly do it because I like the workflow and I find that it's a lot of fun to mix this way.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today while I mix this song through the console. Also, hope you'll check the links in the video description for ways to help support this channel, including links to the Songs for Cats album that this song is from. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel if you have not done so already. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks so much to all the new subscribers. I hope everyone out there has an excellent, wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one. I think I messed that up this time. Thanks so much for watching.